All right, how insane is this location? We're at the Bonneville Salt Flats, which is a place I've been wanting to come to for a super long time, ever since I had the Triumph Bonneville before I crashed it. But then I bought another Bonneville. This is where they set a bunch of land speed records out here because it's just flat. We got this Rubicon out here and some FPV drones. Do you guys taste the salt yet? Jonathan said it's safe to. Tastes like salt. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so huge shout out to our sponsor, Small Rig. Thank you for bringing us out here. And but you've heard of Small Rig. Yeah, I buy everything from Small Rig. Except really? Like a lot of the or are you just saying that because they're sponsoring our trip out here? <laughs> no, like a lot of our like small accessories that we use for the cameras. Yeah. Right. It's all like Small Rig. I actually started buying Small Rig stuff years and years ago because they make those arms that you use for holding monitors and stuff. They make quality stuff on a budget. Speaking of quality stuff on a budget, the video tripod, which is I think which, which is what this video is most likely going to be about. And I've read those comments about how I'm only making videos about super expensive, unaffordable portable stuff lately. Well, here, 400 bucks. Yeah. You haven't seen this tripod yet, huh? No, it's the first time. Honestly, I've been testing this out for a couple months, been doing a couple shoots with it, and some of you have even asked about it, but so far it's been holding up. Video tripods can easily go, you know, five to even $10,000, which I've made videos on before, and they're amazing, but they're also $10,000. <laughs> what are the things you look for in a tripod? Mobile, fast, and not as heavy. The tripod shouldn't slow you down, so yeah. it stops you for any reason, and it's probably not a good tripod. The single latch releases yeah. both stages, which is very nice. It saves a lot of time instead of having to release one and drop it down and release the other. The max height is pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Even like my $4,000 tripod doesn't even go up this high. The thing about tripods is that they're not necessarily like the sexiest topic, you know, but at the same time, it's probably one of the most important tools. Isn't it a saying that if you're going to move the camera, you better have a good reason to do it or something like that? Have you ever heard that saying? Yeah. Every camera movement has to have a purpose. Yeah. This place is so cool and we want to come back right after it rains because apparently it turns into like a giant mirror. But even though we're getting direct sunlight, I feel like the lighting is so even still because we're basically standing on a giant bounce board. Probably the most obvious reason why you would want a fluid head tripod is because you want to be able to do your pans and tilts without it being all jerky like and definitely the tighter the lens goes the more obvious that your instability will show up i'm gonna go all the way into 240 mil right here i actually turned off all image stabilization i'm just gonna get some tracking shots it does have a counterbalance in here so if i bring it up to here and i let go of it it stays now it is a single strength counterbalance the fancier heads you'll notice has a adjustable even though this is just a single stage it's still way nicer than not having one because if you forget to lock the tilt and then you walk away from it you know the camera will eventually just go Arc! right which is never fun but here with this payload it stays stable or if anything it'll just kind of spring itself back to the middle and also notice that this is actually a plate from the dji ronin rs3 pro gears in here which kind of get in the way but check it out right here it says for rs2 and rs3 so you could actually switch between the two types of plates and then it still has its stoppers so just in case this comes loose it's not going to slide off your lens is at like what 200 right now yeah Dang. It does the job right it does the job obviously getting shots like that impossible without a fluid head was that fun yes <laughs> my god there's so much salt on the car now it's delicious i feel like we need to get some fv shots to intercut with it add a little bit of that intensity also i didn't lug this giant pelican over here for nothing i just looked over and i like see you right there in my rear view mirror like what's up <laughs> Did it really just die? Wait, <laughs> your camera just died? No. The battery's good, dude. Wait, so what's wrong? Take a photo. Air, communications between camera and lens is faulty. Clean the lens contacts. I cleaned the lens. Oh, dude, like I had this like for our, about 10 years now. How much of a bummer is it that it, it like busts on you right out here? <laughs> I, I know. No. I was able to take like two photos and then bam, but it's all good, man. Oh, what a bummer. After I'm done filming this, you use this at least. <laughs> it's always a pain in the ass to travel with a bunch of gear, but when you get there, it's just like the shots come out so nice. Like look at the shot. Just with the sun rays coming in back there, it looks so nice. Also, depending on your terrain, sometimes you might want to just press this button, releases that and reveals some spikes underneath. You just spike into the ground. So that may be useful in some cases, but this seems to work pretty well in most cases. So sometimes you could get away with digitally stabilizing an image to make it look nice and smooth. But if you have a lens flare in there and you digitally stabilize it, the lens flare is gonna be going like that. So it definitely is the best to stabilize your camera with something like a tripod or a gimbal opposed to any sort of optical Limit stabilization or digital stabilization or IBIS or any of that stuff. Did you 
he's having fun there. So this actually carries the very first time using a fluid head. So go ahead and adjust the height. Okay. So there's these latches right yeah, here. These yeah. Latches. And then this is nice that it's soft here, right? So yeah. you can pick it up like that. Woo! The thing is you're never gonna get it perfectly leveled out. So you usually have a bubble leveler like this. So in order to level that out, you're gonna take this and unscrew it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And, and then I... you're just gonna level that out and then go ahead and tighten it back up. Ah. All right. Okay, so the tripod doesn't have to be perfect for the camera to No, work. rarely do we actually get it perfect. Now we can pan it and no matter which direction we pan it, it's always gonna be level. It's never gonna be Dutch. What's Dutch? Just not level? Dutch angle is like, Watch it like that. Uh, she wanted I'm to, creative. but <laughs> look at them. You guys are looking good over there. I'm gonna just start getting shots of them now. And I'm your free cameraman now. Let me drop this real quick. And just make sure we're balanced out right here. Cool. And off you go into the distance. Just keep walking until we tell you to stop. How long do you think they're gonna keep going? It's already past nine o'clock, and we still have a little bit of light left, and we still have two more drone batteries. So this is going back up in the air. got some good stuff there. Oh, look at the camera though. Yeah, the camera always comes back so caked. I probably realistically only have like the first few passes good before the camera just gets caked. They got the abuse that, that the drone oh, and the camera shoot. have been through. But if you don't want this to happen to your camera and drone, then you could always put a tele lens and just throw it on here instead. <laughs> Lift it up a little bit. Oh, there you go. it's just right here and then I could just, okay, I like this. One of the big things for me is I hate it when I have to use a lock here and the lock yeah. down here. Cause I mean, the ones that have multiple locks, I always have to tell an AC or a PA or something to come help me out. But this, I could just do it on my own. I don't know how I feel about this little handle. Oh, oh! Uh -huh. Like, uh, so, wait, wait, stop that right now. Okay, sorry. You've That's been awesome. doing the set life for a while. It's been good. I just can't, you know, mess around as much. I have to be professional. It's like the grown up job, right? Like yeah. Compared to YouTube. There's been a couple of times that like I've been a first AC uh -huh. and my DP or the camera operator recognizes Are you the guy on YouTube making inappropriate jokes? Yeah, Is that like, you? Oh man, <laughs> I can't believe you're here. Are you well, having I mean, trouble there, sir? I feel like I'm doing it wrong. Maybe it's this way. <laughs> oh, Guess is it what? the side one? Top loaded. Slam it down. Oh. Top loaded. So you just recorded me struggling for no reason. When you have a cage on here and you have rails and a follow focus unit and stuff like that, you're trying to line it up to slide it in. It's a pain in the ass. When you top load something like this, it's amazing. So doing DIT work, like you know how to download a memory card, legit. I use this program called Shopbook Pro and it kind of organizes everything. It's super easy, but I feel like uh, it's an important job to have. If you mess that up, yeah. uh, it's just like, all the work for nothing. And usually the mess ups happen when you're rushing. You yeah. should never rush anything. Yeah. I feel like any beginners out there that just bought a fancy camera and don't have enough more money <laughs> for <laughs> like a fancy tripod, just get this one. It you're works. Balling right? on a budget. It, it, yeah, balling on a budget. Hey, that yeah, should be dude. the title of this video. <laughs> Thumbnail. It looks like we could get straight down on this tripod head, not quite straight up. This could kind of limit your tilt up, right? But then you could actually have the brake on still and reposition where the switch is so that it's not gonna interfere. Sam, what are you doing? I wanna throw this at the windshield. <laughs> what did they just say? I'm in the ocean position. Oh, what's that mean? That means if a car comes, I need to run away that way. So it's only one lever. One lever for all of it. Yeah. That's nice, right? That's good. Yeah. And do you do a lot of stuff on the gimbals? I do gimbal work, yeah. This one you can kind of like switch between the two. So you could like just pop it off a gimbal and go straight onto here. Dude. So you don't have that's to tell cool. me small rigs <laughs> thought things through before. Bro. <laughs> I love all small rigs though. Hey man, so I let you borrow this small rig tripod. What do you think of it? So far, super lightweight. Super key, especially yeah. if you're traveling. 
a bunch like we are, super yeah. running gun. Yeah. I needed to borrow this thing because my arms were just falling off and I don't need that shaky <laughs> shot and everything. Both legs see drop see out is super nice. Yeah. Versus having yeah, to sit, stitch this one, oh, stitch the other oh, one. Really? You're not gonna find mil. carbon fiber for $400 realistically anywhere else. All right, we're here to film some planes landing. Is that what we're trying to do? That's what we're trying to do. So excuse all the background noise. Uh, it's yeah. so loud right now. I know, right? Why don't you have a fluid head tripod yet? Uh, because I don't want to spend the money on it, that's why. <laughs> For this, I um, decided to use the uh, 800 millimeter or 1600 millimeter with the two times converter. Ah, you got a yeah. cage on there? Cage small on. rig, yeah. Oh, dang, okay. Yeah. Did you know Small Rig sponsored you in this episode? Shut the hell yeah. up. No, shut up, are you <laughs> yeah, serious? No, yeah. Have you used a video tripod before? Like a fluid head with like a 75 mil bowl? Or... Not really. So this is a 75 millimeter bowl right here. So they come in different sizes. This is pretty universal. So you can pretty much take any other 75 mil bowl head, put it on here and you can pretty much take this and put it on something like, if you want to get like an ultra low angle shot, you can get something called like a hi-hat. It essentially would have this mount just like down here or like a Dana dolly where you would just drop this in and slide it around like that. So there are different size bowls that are common and the bigger of a bowl you get, the heavier duty the tripod becomes. So this is a 75 mil. This is actually my favorite because it's what I use the most it's like a good middle ground where you can carry some pretty heavy cameras but it's also you know pretty lightweight you can go to like a hundred or 150 mil bowl for like carrying alexas that are rigged out you could go a size smaller than this to like a 50 mil which is fine for like mirrorless cameras but once you start rigging out cameras or you know you want to use like an fx9 or something like that it definitely like 75 mil is like a good sweet spot where it's very very portable and still super lightweight but also can handle a pretty solid payload. So how much weight can this thing really hold? Legs generally can hold a ton of weight. The head itself is usually gonna be your limiting factor. What I'm really curious about is how the uh, tilting and the panning feels when using it with like an 800 or a 1600. Yeah, let's throw on your camera. Look at this, he's got his bracelet tool set right here. Right here, here we Trying go. Trying to be all cool, but check this out. The little nice. magnetic tool right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You almost got to use almost, your bracelet, almost. you know? know? Look at this thing, this thing's pretty crazy. Like it's got like every type of tool on here. Bottle opener, hex, Phillips. Who makes that? Uh, Leatherman. So I actually have the DJI Ronin RS3 plate on here, and I think that's an Arca Swiss. Dude, I actually just built a slide that straight into here. Oh, We're perfect. Good to go. You had this R6 II for a little while, huh? How are you liking it so far? I'm loving it. You it's got an two awesome of them? camera, yeah. What is that? What's what? What is this? Oh, it's the 800 millimeter. Uh, no, what is, what is, turn it around. What is this? Oh, this is the Potato Jet Edition. What are you doing? No, Canon did what? that. That's how it came. I definitely prefer mid spreaders like 95% of the time, except for when you're in a studio, floor spreaders are kind of nice because when you release like this, then it just goes straight down if it's on the floor spreader. Here, it's like the legs are trying to contract as yeah. you go down. Yeah, yeah. I generally hold it like this and just kick it in the crush. And then you can just get it down like that okay, pretty I easily. See. All right, there's this plane taking off on the right. Let's see. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's right there, yeah. Dang, 800 mil. Insanely tight. Without a video tripod, these kind of shots it's are just, impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. You can't yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've tried. <laughs> Even <laughs> handheld. You got a handheld track with an 800 mil? It's funny. We're like, we need good shots of the planes landing. Yeah, definitely need an 800 so we can get in close. <laughs> and then we get here and the planes are landing like 10 feet away from us. <laughs> $400 for all of this? Yeah, all of it. Yeah. That's a killer deal. Oh, yeah. I thought we were going to go wider. Why are you putting on a doubler? I want to see how crazy we can get. Okay. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> I think I saw somebody. I think I saw somebody. There's that bird right there, right? Oh, I Let's see it right there. That light post? Okay. Oh, oh dang, geez. you got like an extreme close up of that bird. But see, that's the beauty about this tripod. I did it so quickly and so easily. With anything else, I'd still be struggling to find the bird. I remember you had this same setup and you were trying to get a shot of the moon and you would line it up and then you would lock it and then when you let go, it would like yeah. boom. Yeah, and it, it was it impossible. It. Yeah. I never got anything. What's nice about a solid fluid head is like when you plant it and then you lock it there, it just stays. Does yours have a pan lock separate from like the tension and adjustability? And all it that? has a lot, but there's no real like uh, smoothness or like tension like that. No yeah. gradient. Yeah, so this one's got the lock, so that's nice, but you also get to adjust the tension of how much resistance you want on your pan. I actually like to have a decent amount of tension on my pan. And then you also have this knob here for your tilt tension, but then it doesn't have a separate independent tilt lock. But what is nice about this is that when you do engage the lock by just tightening it a little bit more, then it definitely keeps it on lock. Like, let go of it real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh. oh. Oh no! <laughs> but yeah, that just goes to show how good the lock was. Oh, there it is! I see a freaking face! That smoothness out of a 1600? Yeah, that's crazy. Is this the tripod that you used for Veritasium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it in the <laughs> you video. You saw it? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this lens. I don't use it that much, and I have used it with my tripods, 
But this tripod for $400 with this right here, 100% worth it. You want to put a more reasonable lens on here? Yeah, I mean, yeah, let's do it. Let's I don't do think it. we need 1600 for all of this. Yeah, look at that. This is 240 millimeter. Wah, wah, wah. I mean, when the airplanes are landing 16 feet away from our faces yeah, and you I can know, feel the jet fuel burning your face off, it's a reasonable lens for that. This is going to feel like a piece of cake to you now. Crotch kick, bam, ow. And then you always want to turn off all the locks on all these before you store them. If you have the locks on and it's getting bumped around, it could. Oh, I see, I see, I so see. It's just a rule of thumb, like off fluid head tripods, generally you want to like loosen everything Loosen it, up. yeah, okay, yeah. I see. Really easy, lightweight. No, this is great. For 400 bucks, it's a killer deal. Cool. Link in the description. Yeah. It, it, you know what though? Down it looks there. nice too. It looks yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah. You look legit. Yeah. You look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> I feel like we're the pit crew right here. It's like, we're on the gimbal. <laughs> 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 You should zoom into that guy. He's, he's trying to compete with you. He's trying to show us Yeah, up. with the 800 millimeter, you can hear what they're saying. Oh, look at those guys over there with the TD camera. Look at our big camera. You know what they say about guys with big cameras, you know. <laughs> 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 they make a lot of money. <laughs> Back to the best 800 mil lens on the planet. So here we go. I'm recording the guy that's recording the guy that's recording <laughs> something. <laughs> this lens is just stuck in F11? F11, you can't go higher or lower. Yeah, and when you put the extender, it's stuck at F22. Oh, dang. Yeah. And any little speck of dust, you can see it anywhere. <laughs> Everything's like in focus. Atom and a proton. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. It's fun because it's really steady. Yeah. Really, really steady. This has an adapter in it, so you can actually spin this off and reveal like a 3 8 inch underneath it. I use it for things like putting master wheels on there, which is like super heavy. I think it's essentially just like a giant brick of metal. If you just want like a small yeah, lightweight yeah, slider, yeah, yeah. you just slap it straight on top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about it tweaking the tripod head. Yeah. The tripod heads generally have less payload capacity than the legs themselves. So by putting it straight onto the 75 mil bowl, you have more payload capacity. Yeah. But like the downside of it is that it is kind of a, a thread on type of thing so if you don't tighten it hard enough and then you go like this real fast then it can break loose and then you start unscrewing it right yeah, yeah. but small rig's working on some solutions to be able to lock it into place i got a bird i got a Whoa. bird i got a bird oh, <laughs> dang oh that little bird i got him too <laughs> <laughs> so is it possible to like bring this up to close the legs a little bit more and then lock it like yeah. this. So this spreader is on the widest setting right now. So then you would just loosen this and, and this then you is, could retighten oh, it like I that. I see, I see. And yeah. now you've got like a, a tighter footprint. Yeah, as I'm turning and walking around the tripod, I catch myself kicking the legs. This is much better right now. All right, so give us yeah. your review on the tripod. The thing you like about it and the thing you don't like. I, I like how steady it is. I like how light it is. And I love the price. I love the price. <laughs> what do you not like? What don't I like? Um, can I connect it to like Wi-Fi or something like that? <laughs> Can I watch some Netflix on it? <laughs> My overall thoughts, I honestly had a lot of doubts when I saw how cheap this is for a 75 mil fluid head. But honestly, I put it through some use and abuse and it held up. I think for this price range, it's going to be really tough to beat. Let's go ahead and pull up some comments from the last video, which was about the Freefly Ember, a super slow-mo camera. Top comment is from Ryan Wiseman. It's great to see more options other than Phantom cameras. Now, instead of I need to rob a bank up for this camera, it's my wife left me because I went bankrupt up to affording this camera price but which is far better so yeah this is precisely why i'm starting to test more budget friendly equipment I do not want you guys robbing banks the slow-mo guys are here seems like amazing quality for the price point love the size too well i love the slow-mo guys i mean they use the phantom to get some legit million frames per second stuff it's pretty wild so it's cool to see you guys here the whole world is coming out with sony camera and lens reviews and just like hold my beer <laughs> yeah i should have probably come out with the sony video that probably would have gotten more views but once in a while i just feel like i need to just skip an embargo video and just focus on making something that i i have a lot of fun making and he says this channel should change his name to potato and friends because all reviews are basically gene showing you or interesting gear to all his friends or random people he meets yeah i hope you guys have been enjoying the content where i go film with friends i mean honestly that's the type of filming i personally enjoy and i feel like it just kind of helps these videos get a more well-rounded perspective wait what is that tripod called funny you ask it actually does have a name it's a small rig flames i've just been calling it the carbon fiber 75 mil oh it's a free blazer so yeah link down there in the description if you decide that you want this thing or if you just want the legs by itself you can also do that and have a single latch release but that is it thank you so much for watching and see you guys next week